Chapter 1 A Mountain Home It was a hot morning in June in the Alps. Heidi walked behind her aunt named Diet. They were walking through the village and up the mountain. Heidi was very hot because she was wearing all her clothes. She had to carry them to her new home. She was only six years old. As Heidi and her aunt hurried out of the village, a villager stopped to talk. Diet, is this the orphan your sister left when she died? Where are you taking her? Yes, this is Heidi. I'm taking her to live with her grandfather. I'm starting a job in the city. So I can't take care of her anymore. Poor Heidi, said the villager. No one else will talk to that grumpy old man. While Diet was talking with the villager, Heidi met a boy named Peter. He was the village goat herder. Every morning, Peter came to the village to get the goats. He was going to take them up the mountain. Heidi followed him up the mountain. She couldn't keep up with him because of her heavy clothes. So she took off all of them except her underwear. Then she danced behind Peter. He thought she was funny. The two children began laughing. Deke caught up with them. Where are your clothes? she asked. I don't need them. Heidi said. I want to run free like the goats. Aunt Deet scolded Heidi and sent Peter to get her clothes. They walked for another hour. Near the mountaintop was Grandfather's hut. The old man was sitting in front of the house. Heidi ran up to him and held out her hand. Hello, Grandfather, she said. He held her hand and stared at her. Good morning, uncle, said Deet. Heidi must stay with you now. She explained why she couldn't take care of the child anymore. The old man was angry. You can just get out of here, he yelled at Deet. Aunt Deet said goodbye to Heidi very quickly and left. Heidi looked around her new home. Where can I sleep? asked Heidi. Anywhere you want, answered Grandfather. Heidi saw a ladder behind the bed. She climbed the ladder up to the loft. The loft was filled with fresh hay. I'll sleep up here, said Heidi happily. Heidi followed Grandfather everywhere. She watched as he made a new chair for her. When the sun was setting, Heidi heard a whistle. It was Peter bringing the goats home. Grandfather had two goats. Their names were Daisy and Dusky. Heidi liked them at once. The next morning, Peter's whistle woke Heidi. She got ready to go with Peter. She was excited. The mountain was very beautiful. Heidi picked flowers and chased the goats. Peter told her all of the goats' names. Heidi was sad when she heard that a little goat had lost its mother. She promised to take special care of that goat. By now, the sun was setting. It spread a golden glow across the tops of the mountains. Peter, cried Heidi. The mountains are on fire. Don't worry, replied Peter. That happens every day. It means it's time to go home. Heidi went up the mountain with Peter every day during the summer. She grew to be healthy and strong. She was as free as a bird. But when the fall came, Grandfather made her stay at home. He was afraid the strong winds would blow her off the mountain. She spent the days helping him make cheese. Then came the winter and lots of snow. Peter went to school in the winter. One day, he came to the hut. He told Heidi that his grandmother would like to meet her. She wanted to go. 
but Grandfather said the snow was too deep. A few days later, the snow finally stopped. The sun came out, and Grandfather said she could go out. He put Heidi on his sled. The sled raced down the mountain very fast. Grandfather stopped the sled in front of Peter's small hut. Heidi met an old woman that was sewing. Hello, Granny, said Heidi. Granny smiled and felt Heidi's hand. Granny was blind. Why can't you see? asked Heidi. I can't see, Granny said kindly, but I can hear. Heidi spent the rest of the winter with Granny. Sometimes Grandfather came and fixed the windows and chairs in Granny's hut. Chapter 2 Heidi Goes to Frankfurt it was near the end of Heidi's second happy winter with Grandfather. One day, the village pastor came to the hut. He was angry at Grandfather because Heidi wasn't in school. Heidi doesn't need school, argued Grandfather. She'll grow up here with the goats and the birds. They won't teach her any bad ideas. She must learn to read and write, the pastor argued back but he couldn't change Grandfather's mind. The next day, Aunt Deet came to the hut. I have a wonderful opportunity for Heidi, she said. Heidi is going to live with a wealthy family in Frankfurt. She'll be a companion to their little girl. Heidi is happy here, Grandfather said rudely. She doesn't need to go to Frankfurt. Aunt Deet said, this is a chance for Heidi to go to school and church. Fine, yelled Grandfather. Then take her, and don't ever come back. Heidi didn't want to leave Grandfather to go to Frankfurt. But Aunt Deet lied to her that they would be back in a day or two. You can even bring fresh bread for Granny, said Aunt Deet. This idea pleased Heidi. Granny had trouble eating black, hard bread. They left so quickly that Heidi couldn't even say goodbye to Peter. Deet took Heidi to a large house in Frankfurt. A rich man named Mr. Cece Man owned the house. His daughter Clara had to stay in a wheelchair. Her mother had died a long time ago. Now Ms. Rottenmeier was looking after her. Ms. Rottenmeier took a look at Heidi. She did not like her old clothes and hat. She didn't even like Heidi's name. Is Heidi a real name? Ms. Rottenmeier asked. Her mother named her Adelheid, Aunt Deet explained. Then we shall call her Adelheid, said Ms. Rottenmeier. Later, when Ms. Rottenmeier was away, Clara said, I'll call you Heidi if you want. It doesn't matter, said Heidi. I'll be going home tomorrow with some fresh bread. No, said Clara. You came here to keep me company. At the dinner table, Heidi was happy to find fresh bread on her plate. She put it in her pocket. A servant, Sebastian, brought a dish of food for Heidi. She didn't know what to do with it. She had never eaten this way before. Then Ms. Rottenmeier told Heidi how she should behave at the table for a long time. But while she was talking, Heidi fell asleep. When Heidi awoke, she didn't know where she was. She remembered that she was in Frankfurt. She was afraid. A few days later, Heidi went for a walk while Clara was resting. Sebastian told her to look at the whole city from the church tower. When she climbed up to the top of the tower, all she could see was buildings. There were no mountains and trees. The church keeper could see that she was disappointed. So he showed her a basket of kittens. You can have them, he said. I'll deliver them to your house. Oh, yes, said Heidi. 
but can I have two of them now? The keeper gave Heidi two kittens. When she got home, everyone was waiting for her. Ms. Rottenmeyer was angry. Who said you could leave the house? she asked. Meow, a sound came from Heidi's pocket. Ms. Rottenmeyer screamed. She was afraid of cats. The next morning, there was a knock at the door. Sebastian came back with a big basket. Clara opened it, and kittens ran everywhere. One kitten climbed up Ms. Rottenmeyer's skirt. Sebastian, she screamed. Get rid of these little monsters. That evening, Ms. Rottenmeyer decided to punish Heidi. She said, I'm going to lock you in the cold basement. But Clara said, please, wait until my father gets home. Let him decide what to do. Ms. Rottenmeyer agreed. For the next few days, Heidi didn't get into any trouble. But she was becoming very homesick. Chapter 3 Homesick Mr. Cece Man came home from his business trip with many gifts. He was happy to see Clara. He was also happy to meet Heidi. He could see that Heidi and Clara liked each other. But Ms. Rottenmeyer said terrible things about Heidi to Clara's father. I think that little girl is crazy, she said. You should see the trouble she's caused here. Mr. Cece Man asked Clara about Heidi. What happened while I was away? Clara told him about the kittens and other things. Mr. Cece Man laughed. He went to Ms. Rottenmeyer and said, Heidi will stay. She is good for Clara. A few days later, Mr. Cece Man left on another business travel. But his mother, Grandmama Cece Man, came to visit. Her face seemed very kind to Heidi. Heidi liked Grandmama very much. One day, Grandmama showed Heidi a book. She wanted to help Heidi with her reading. In the book there was a picture of a boy with goats on a mountain. The picture reminded Heidi of Peter, so she began to cry. She was very homesick. Grandmama told Heidi she could have the book when she learned to read. From then on, Heidi tried very hard to read. That night, she prayed to God to help her read and go home. After a week, Grandmama heard Heidi reading to Clara. She gladly gave Heidi the picture book. It was time for Grandmama to leave the house. After she left, something strange started happening at night. Every morning, the front door was wide open. Sebastian locked the door tight every evening. But in the morning, it was open. It was a mystery. One night, Sebastian and another servant stayed up to watch the door. Then the wind blew the candle out. The house was totally dark, and the door was open. Sebastian saw a small person in white run up the stairs. He thought it was a ghost. He told everyone there was a ghost in the house. Two days later, Mr. Cece Man came home. He and his friend, Dr. Classen, stayed up to watch the door. Late that night, they heard the door opening. There was a small person in white clothes. It was Heidi. What are you doing? asked Mr. Cece Man. Heidi looked confused. I don't know, she answered. Every night I dream I'm back with Grandfather. She's been sleepwalking, said Dr. Classen. She must be very homesick. The only cure is to send her home. The next day, Mr. Cece Man prepared to send Heidi home. Clara was very upset when she learned Heidi was leaving. But her father promised her she could visit Heidi with Grandmama very soon. Chapter 4 
Chapter 4 Heidi Returns Sebastian and Heidi traveled to her village. All of the villagers were surprised that Heidi came back to live with her grandfather. The first place Heidi ran to was Peter and Granny's hut. Heidi cried and sat on Granny's lap. She gave Granny a basket of fresh bread. Then she climbed the mountain to see her grandfather. He was sitting outside the hut, just like the first time she saw him. Grandfather! Heidi cried. She threw her arms around him. Grandfather cried for the first time in many years. So you've come back, he said. That night, Heidi slept in her old bed in the loft. It was the best night of sleep she'd had in a long time. The next day, Grandfather woke Heidi. Put your best clothes on, he said. We're going to church. They went to church in the village. Grandfather spoke to the pastor. I've decided to move to the village for the winter. Heidi will go to school. The villagers were surprised to see Grandfather and the pastor talking like friends. On the way home, Grandfather told Heidi, I never thought I would be this happy again. It was a good day when God sent you to me. That fall, Peter often asked Heidi to herd the goats with him. But she told him she was too busy. She was cleaning the hut. She was also waiting for her friends from Frankfurt to visit. One day, she looked down the mountain and saw somebody coming. It was Dr. Klassen. Grandfather and Heidi greeted him. Where are Grandmama and Clara? Heidi asked. I'm alone, he said. Clara has been sick. She can't travel until springtime, when the weather is warmer. Heidi was sad, but she was glad to see Dr. Klassen. Grandfather gave Dr. Klassen a mug of fresh goat's milk and some golden cheese. This will be a good place for Clara to get well, said the doctor. That winter, Heidi and Grandfather moved down to the village. Grandfather rented a small hut there. Heidi missed the mountains. But she was very happy to go to school. She studied her lessons very hard. But Peter rarely went to school. One day, Heidi asked him, Why weren't you at school again today? I couldn't stop the sled, lied Peter. It went straight through the village. I couldn't get off. Then it was too late to go to school. If you do that again, said Grandfather, you're going to get in big trouble with me. When Heidi and Peter came to visit Granny, she was very sick. Granny couldn't get out of bed. Heidi read to her to cheer her up. She thought Peter should learn to read. Then he could read to Granny, and maybe she would get well. The next day at school, Heidi said to Peter, You must learn to read. So then you can read to Granny. I can't do it, Peter replied. I'm going to teach you, said Heidi. Reading was very difficult for Peter. But Heidi made him learn the ABCs with a book from Clara. Then he began to read a few words. A few weeks later, he could read to Granny. The whole village heard that Heidi got Peter to read. Everyone was very impressed. Chapter 5 The Mountain Miracle When spring came, the mountains turned green again. Then Grandfather and Heidi moved back up to their hut on the mountain. One day, Peter brought Heidi a letter. It was from Clara. Clara and Grandmama will be here in six weeks, cried Heidi. She was very excited. But Peter was not. He was angry and jealous. One morning in June, 
Heidi saw them coming up. One man was pushing Clara in her wheelchair. Another man carried their things. Grandmama rode behind them on a horse. Clara and Grandmama were amazed at the beauty of Heidi's mountain home. Oh, Heidi, cried Clara. If only I could run over the hills with you. Don't worry, said Heidi. I'll push you everywhere. Then Grandfather served everyone big mugs of goat's milk and toasted cheese. They ate happily outside in the gentle breeze and sunshine. When Clara saw Heidi's bed in the hayloft, she said, It must be wonderful to look at the stars while you go to sleep. Grandfather asked Grandmama, Why don't you let Clara stay here with us while you stay in the village? Grandmama agreed. I think it will be very good for Clara's health to stay here. As the days passed, Grandfather grew to like Clara very much. He told Peter to feed the goats the best grass. They made extra good milk that would make Clara strong. While Clara stayed with them for two weeks, Grandfather helped her stand. Standing made her legs and feet hurt very much. But each day, she tried to stand a little longer. Heidi begged Grandfather to carry Clara up to the top of the mountain. That was the place where the was the most beautiful. But Grandfather said he would do that only if Clara could stand on her own. Heidi was excited and told Peter. But this made Peter angry. He wanted Clara to go away. The next morning, Peter went up to the hut. He saw the empty wheelchair outside. He kicked the wheelchair with anger. The wheelchair went rolling down the side of the mountain. Peter was so afraid. He ran away without taking the goats. Grandfather and Heidi came outside and found out the wheelchair was gone. They looked everywhere for the wheelchair. Grandfather saw it down below the mountain. The wheelchair was in pieces. It was destroyed. It must have been the wind said Heidi. Clara began to cry. Now I'll never be able to go up the mountain. That's okay, said Grandfather. I'll carry you up. By the way, where is Peter? Grandfather picked up Clara, and they walked up the mountain. The goats followed them. When Grandfather saw Peter, he scolded him for forgetting the goats. Did you see Clara's wheelchair? asked Grandfather. Peter just shook his head to say, no. Grandfather left the children on top of the mountain and went back home. After lunch, Heidi wanted to take Clara higher to see the prettiest flowers. Peter and I can carry you, Heidi said. They pulled Clara to her feet. But suddenly, she began to take a step. I'm walking, she shouted. When Grandfather came to get them later, he was happy to see Clara walk. Clara practiced walking for the next week. When Grandmama came up the mountain, Clara surprised her. She cried with joy when she saw Clara walking. Thank you so much, she said to Grandfather. Your kindness and care have done this for her. And God's son and the mountain air, Grandfather replied. Then Grandmama decided to send a letter to Clara's father. She wanted him to come early and join them for the surprise. Mr. Cece Man had almost arrived at the hut. He expected to meet Clara and Heidi in a moment. Clara was waiting at the hut with a surprise for him. They saw him getting close to the hut. Then Clara stood up and walked to him. Mr. Cece Man was surprised and cried, It's a miracle. Mr. Cece Man thanked Grandfather and Heidi for helping Clara. Grandmama saw Peter hiding behind the hut. Young man, she said, why are you so afraid of us? 
I think Peter was the wind that blew Clara's wheelchair down the mountain, said Grandfather. Grandmama took Peter aside. What you did was very bad. But I understand how you feel, she said. I hope you will always remember us. Peter became happy. Later, Mr. C.C. Mann asked Grandfather if there was any way he could repay him. Grandfather thought for a while. Then he said, Will you promise to take care of Heidi when I die? Mr. C.C. Mann promised he would, and the men shook hands. It was time for the Seasmans to leave. Clara was sad. But Heidi said to her, Don't worry. Soon it will be summer again. Then you can come back and see us. Heidi stood on the mountain and watched her friends leave. She waved until she couldn't see them anymore. Shortly after, Dr. Klassen came to live in the village. He bought a hut and shared it with Grandfather and Heidi in the winter. He told Grandfather that he thought of Heidi as his own child. He promised to always take care of her. Heidi spent another happy winter in the village. All around were people who cared for her.